<laughs> Friday, December 12th in dance class, we're going to talk about burning children. <laughs> it's not a how-to, it's a how it happened. Um, so we have Pony Boy and Johnny hanging out at the church because of the whole, you know, stabbing and killing a kid. And then this was the one of the next morning, one of the mornings that they're there, that they both go out to watch the sunrise. And while they're watching the sunrise, Pony Boy says to this poem, this poem is going to come back and play a big role in the story. So I wanted to go through and talk about it. And the poem is the one that he recites. Uh, let me see, I'm going to find the page real quick for those of you who can follow along on the home version. And let's see, uh, flames, no, back, and the burning, chapter 5, there it is, page 77. And so, what it says there is, I'm going to read from there, in the middle way, halfway down, 77 says, Golly, J Johnny's voice beside me made me jump. That sure was pretty. Talking about the sunrise in the morning. Yeah, I sighed, wishing I had some paint to do a picture with while the sight was still fresh in my mind. The mist was what was pretty, all gold and silver. Um, I said, trying to blow a smoke ring. Too bad it can't stay like that all the time. Nothing gold can stay. I was remembering a poem I'd read once. What? Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaf's a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sinks to grief. So dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. Johnny was staring at me. Where'd you learn that? That's what I meant. Robert Frost wrote it. He meant more to it than I'm getting, though. I was trying to find the meaning the poet had in mind, but it eluded me. I always remembered it because I never quite got what he meant by it. Well, now we're going to figure out what he means by it. So, with the poem, to break down the little bits that go into it, where it says, nature's first green is gold, this is a big old fat metaphor. Specifically, the gold is going to be a metaphor for something that we're going to get to. Um, where it says, her early leaves of flower, but only so an hour, then leaves of highs to leaves, so Eden sank to grief. That Illusion with Eden. Do you know what that is an allusion to? Meaning, what is it that literary reference to? Shove. To a sunset? Close, but not quite. The actual Eden part. Yes, dear? The Garden of Eden. And what's with the Garden of Eden? Well, it's in the Bible, and it's this really, really beautiful place where Adam and Eve are. Uh huh. And the thing. Uh huh. And what happens to Apple, them? and they, um, and so, like, Eve is alluded by the snake, and the snake tells her to eat the apple off the tree of knowledge. Yes, and it wasn't an apple. To. So she tells Adam to eat it, and Adam eats it, and then they get dance in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, so it's the idea that it was this place of extreme happiness created by the big guy, dude, fish, whatever you believe in. And so he had this happy place, and then all of a sudden people were there, and then the happy place gets ruined. So the idea of happy place getting ruined. So as it goes through there, it's nature's first green is gold. I mean, the, the beginning of the year, spring comes up and everything is happy. The beginning of everything is out there. Does spring last forever? Nope. Does greenery last forever? No. Eventually it becomes, it disappears. You have winter time as we have now and everything is dead all around you. That's why it's hard for her to hold on. It's easier to have death and have everything die off than it is to keep everything living. That's why it's hard to find a planet that we can live on because it's hard to get things to grow. Her early leaves of flower, but only so an hour. So you have these pretty little things popping up, but they don't last very long. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so that goes away. So Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. The idea that when you wake up, the dawn is the very beginning of the day, but it's not going to be there forever. Before I go farther into it, do you guys have any guesses on what the poem is trying to tell us? Clark? Well, it isn't. Well, if it's saying um, it only lasts for a while, and it's like happiness stuff, then when you're young, you're all happy, and you're joyful, and you don't really care much about anything. But then when you get older, you realize you have more responsibilities, so the happiness kind of sinks away. You are correct. Gold is the metaphor for happy. And the idea, based on the poem says, life sucks. You're going to wake up, and then eventually you're going to realize you're going to get old, and everything that is happy in your life is going to go away. So get used to the fact that happiness disappears. The fact that when you wake up in the morning, and you're like, it's a brand new day, anything could happen, 
And then you get to school and you're like, I didn't do well, and that person doesn't like me, and I stubbed my toe, and I spilled coffee on them, and you realize the whole day is awful, and you wake up the next day, and so in the morning, the whole day is in front of you, anything can happen, and then all they can do is go downhill and get worse. When you're a young kid and you have no worries and your homework is to go outside and play and go skipping around, you're like, yay! And then you get older, then you have to do book reports and projects, and you have to spend all night doing it, and you're like, life sucks. And then you get older than that, and you have like jobs, you torture children, you're like, your life was great. And then you get older, you have to pay tax, you're like, life isn't fun anymore. And so the idea that eventually it gets all depressing. The idea that everything that's happy in your life will eventually disappear and what? go away. That's the idea that nothing gold can stay. That's what connects to the idea of the book, is the fact of the idea of hold on to your happiness. The idea that when you have that gold in your life, recognize it and hold on to that gold that you have. Keep a hold of it and recognize when you're happy, because happiness doesn't last forever. Yes, dear. And I used a stapler, and I won't go have a hundred desk you have to get it for me again. Uh -huh. But because uh, I had another one, and then I didn't staple it in yet. Yes, I can grab that for you. Okay, because last time I went behind your desk, you bad things happen to you. <laughs> yes, you are correct. So, <laughs> speaking of bad things happening, they eventually have a visitor come and join them. And who comes to join them? Dally shows up, and he's all excited, and they talk, and he brings a letter for Pony Boy, and who's the letter from? Soda. Soda Pop, and Soda Pop's like, hey, we miss you, and stuff like that, and they decide to go out and eat, and where they go to eat? Dairy Queen. Because it's delicious, and they go eat to Dairy Queen, and while they're there, I think Johnny has like five barbecue sandwiches or something like that, because what's the only thing they've eaten all week? Bologna. Bologna and chocolate Bread. bars. Uh, and the bread that went with the bologna. But they had the chocolate bars, they ate all those like the first two days. Uh, because that's what you do when you're a teenager. Um, and so they ate all those right away. And then while they're there, uh, Johnny comes to a major decision. And what decision does Johnny come to? Turn himself in. And why is he going to turn himself in? Because he doesn't like it that he's putting Pony Boy in danger. Yeah, he says, I feel bad the fact that I'm putting Pony Boy in danger. Plus, he says, hey, it was self-defense. And it turns out they have a spy that's going to help them. Because who's going to help them? Cherry! Cherry! And she's like, I'm here to help you out. And that's when Dally's like talking about Cherry. And she's like, she's kind of a good looking chick, huh? And Pony Boy's like, you have no idea. Uh, they have a little conversation back and forth. Then, let's see, where was I? They have a little conversation that goes back and forth where Johnny was talking to Dally, and when they're leaving it, and da what, wait, back up. What is Dally's thoughts about Johnny turning himself in? He doesn't like it. He Why? Because he doesn't want him to go to jail because yeah. it will change him. He says, when you go to jail, it makes you hardened and grumpy and mean. He's like, you don't want to be hardened and grumpy and mean. And that's when uh, Johnny says, well, do you want me to be on the run forever? Not asking it sarcastically. He's honest. He's like, would it be better for me to be on the run? And before Dally can answer, they get back to the church, and there's a surprise. And what's the surprise at the church? Fire! Fire! fire. The roof, the roof, the roof is on. And so the roof is on fire when they get back to the whole place. And, of course... Pony Boy and Johnny, being the good decision-making people they are, what do they decide to do? They see a fire burning building. They decide to go running into it, not just for funsies, but why do they go running into it? To save the kitties. Which, by the way, one of my favorite parts of the book is they run into the teacher. And on the little hill, Jerry, whatever the teacher's name is, and the, the teacher's just sitting there watching this whole place burn down. And the other teacher comes running up and says, Hey, we're missing kids. So what does Jerry say? Just running around. Yeah, he's just like, oh, let's go find the part real quick. Uh, hang on. Jerry's so awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, come on, Jerry, where is your caring about kill children? Um, <laughs> no, almost it was. Page 91. Um, There's uh, the, the top right hand side that comes running up. It's the bottom of page 90. Well, we don't know for sure. What's going on? Well, we don't know for sure. The man said the good nature. Smiling, big burning building, he's just laughing and having a good time. We were having a school picnic up here, and the first thing we knew, the place is burning up. Thank goodness this is a wet season, and the old thing's worthless anyway. Then, to the kids, he shouted, Stand back, children! The firemen will be coming soon! I bet we started it, I said to Johnny. We must have dropped a lighted cigarette or something. About that time, a lady came running up. Jerry, some of the kids are missing! Ah, they're probably around here somewhere. You can't tell with all this excitement where they might be. No, she shook her head. They've been missing for at least a half hour. I thought they were climbing the hill. 
So there's missing kids, and the teacher's like, nah, they're fine. <laughs> Let's not worry about that large burning building in front of us and missing children. I read this as a teacher, and I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> and then, of course, that Swin Pony Boy and John, you're like, wait a minute. I think there's kid kebabs in there. And they freak out about the whole thing, and then they go run in to apparently save children. <laughs> Whatever. And they go in there to try and do their thing. And, oh, when Pony Boy goes to save the kids, my next favorite part, what do the kids do when he tries to save them? Bite them. Yeah. <laughs> like a little prod as he reaches out to grab them and like, bark, and bites on them. <laughs> He's like, rawr, 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 rawr. He's like, that's how I imagined it. He's shaking his hand, the kid's like flopping back and forth. And then throws the kid out the window. Once again, I was like, best scene ever. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, you have the part where they try to get out, but before Johnny can get out, what happens? The roof collapses. Oh, yeah. The roof, the roof, the roof collapses. Oh, uh, and it collapses, falls on him. And you have the fact that um, Dally slugs, punches Pony Boy. And why does uh, Dally slug, punch Pony Boy? His no, I go back in there because his back was on fire. If you remember when he comes out, he's like, "Oh, I wish I could take off this jacket. It's a little warm." Why is the jacket warm? He's on fire. He's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and so when he came out, apparently it was the process of saving his life. So what do we call that? Saving life. Irony. Oh. <laughs> because he's like, I wish I could take this thing off. It's killing me. He's like, no, it's saving you. And so that's where you have that same idea where he was trying to get out. It didn't work. And of course, we have they get sent to the hospital. You have Dally and, and Pony Boy and Johnny all go there. And then it gets a bit more depressing. Because what do we find out happened to Johnny? He's, paralyzed. He's almost yeah. dead. Almost dead, but not all the way dead. And so you have apparently the ceiling fell down and broke his back, and he got burnt. It's bad news and good news. The bad news is, hey, you're burnt over most of your body. The good news is you're paralyzed and can't feel your body. So, yay. And so you have little things like that to try and help him. What? Kayla? I'm confused about how Dally got hurt, because he wasn't he standing outside of the church, though? Like, he he was. Yeah. But then he goes inside to pull Johnny out. Oh, because he, he comes running up because he yelled at them the first time. Oh, yeah. And why doesn't the, the, the teacher go into the building after him? Because he's, he's laughing at He's too fat. He was too fat. That's when Johnny was like, he's too fat. Wait, are you talking about Jerry or the Jerry? Yeah, Jerry can't. But Jerry just didn't carry his fat, so why would he care? Well, he tried. He wobbled yeah. down there. Did yeah. <laughs> but then Dally was the one that he, he, like he put out the fire the on Pony Boy, and then apparently Dally jumped in and. Uh, which I'm sure probably isn't real good on the whole broken back thing when you have some thug grabbing you and like food and throwing you out the window, but he didn't die, so yay! Um, and so pulls him out, and then we get to move forward from there, and then see we get back to the oh yeah, we find out he gets to meet up with his brothers, and we find out bad news because what is it the state's gonna do? Or put think about it. Put him in a, and why is this state gonna put him in a boys' home? Because they don't want to be with his brother. And why they think he's not fit? Because he ran away. Yeah, something about being wanted for murder. <laughs> Weird. Uh, and so apparently that was a little thing where you do the stabby stabby, running, running, and they're like, oh, wanted for murder, probably not being a good parent. And so that's when Derry's like, I tried to raise him right, I don't know. And they have little issues, and we have that issue coming up, about he's going to have to go to court to find out if he's going to have to get the state of Derry and all that fun stuff. I did not follow this book. So we're trying to help you by going through and giving you a little rundown as we go through. And so you have the little thing that he might have to go to the boys' home. And then, let's see, we jump from that one to the hospital with, oh yeah, Johnny's mom shows up. Um, and we have the scene with Johnny's mom. Let's back up a little bit. When they're at the Dairy Queen, there's only one person that Johnny asks about. His parents. His parents. And what does Dally say about his parents? They, they don't care. care. Yeah, and he's like, they don't care about you. And he's like, don't worry about it. He's like, uh, there it is, the bottom of page 87. <coughs> and Johnny was like, I'm sure it ain't fair for Pony Boy to have to stay up in that church with Dairy and Soda worrying about him all the time. I don't guess. He swallowed, tried to not look eager. I don't guess my parents are worried about me or anything. The boys are worried. Dally said in a matter-of-fact voice. Two-Bit was going to Texas to hunt for you. My parents, did they ask about me? No, they didn't. So you get to find out, oh, nice people. And then when he's in the hospital, the parents, his mom, shows up in the hospital. Let's find out about Mrs. M. Page 122. 
and this is when his mom shows up in the hospital and gets to talk to him from there. Uh, it says, a nurse opened the, appeared in the doorway. Johnny, your mother's here to see you. Johnny opened his eyes, and at first they were wide with surprise, then they darkened. I don't want to see her. She's your mother. I said I don't want to see her. His voice was rising. She's probably coming to tell me all the trouble I'm causing her, about how she's glad her old man would be when I am dead. Well, tell her to leave me alone for once. His voice broke. For once, she leave me alone. He was struggling what? to sit up, but he suddenly gasped, went whiter than the pillowcase, and passed out cold. The nurse hurried me out the door. I was afraid of something like this to happen if he saw anyone. And then as they're leaving, Tubit and uh, Pony Boy get to run into her, which is on the next page. As we walked out into the hall, we saw Johnny's mother. I knew her. She was a little woman with straight black hair, big black eyes like Johnny's. But that was as far as the resemblance went. Johnny Cake's eyes were fearful and sensitive. Hers were cheap and hard. As we passed her, she was saying, But I have a right to see him. He's my son. After all the trouble his father and I have gone to raise him, this is our reward? He'd rather see those no-count hoodlums than his own folks. She saw us and gave us such a look of hatred, I almost backed up. It was your fault. I was running around in the middle of the night, getting jailed, heaven knows what else. I thought she was going to cuss us out. I really did. Tubit's eyes got narrow, and I was afraid he was going to start something. I don't like to hear women get sworn at, even if they deserve it. No wonder he hates your guts. Tubit snapped. He was going to tell her off real good, but I shoved him along. I felt sick. No wonder Johnny didn't want to see her. No wonder he stayed overnight at Two Bits or at our house and slept in the vacant lot in good weather. I remember my mother, beautiful, golden like soda, wise and firm like dairy. Oh, Lordy. There was a catch in Two Bits' voice. And he was closer to tears than I'd ever seen him. He has to live with that? So, uh, Mama Cade... Not the nicest person. Uh -uh. Um, and then one of the greasers that beat up the pony boy comes to see him. And what greaser comes to see him? Or not what greaser? So what social comes to see him? Randy. 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 And that's when Randy has a little moment where he pulls pony boy to the side and they have a little conversation and talk where Randy is shocked to find out that pony boy did what he did. Why is Randy shocked? Because he's a greaser. Because he's a greaser. He's like, I didn't think greasers would do something like that. And Randy says something about the fight, and, or about the rumble coming up, the big fight between all the socials and the greasers. And what does Randy say about the big rumble? He's not going to fight. And why is he not going to do it? Because he's tired of it. And that's when you get this idea of him saying he's tired of the fight. He's, he's like, people get hurt, people get killed. He's like, it's not worth it. He's like, even if you guys beat us, you're not going to win because we're still going to be rich and you're still going to be poor. Nothing's going to change. So Randy comes up with the fact that he's not going to get into the fight. If you didn't get that far, it's fine. I didn't give away too much. I tried to help clarify it. So when you get to those parts, it'll make things a little bit easier on you. 9 and 10, we have the rumble coming up. So in 9, we're going to have the rumble. And in 10, we're going to have the fallout from the rumble. There is big stuff that's going to happen in 9 and 10. Do not speak of what happens in 9 and 10 until you get there. Because you're going to want to. We will be talking about 9 and 10. I'm telling you now that if you've not read 9 and 10 on Tuesday, I will be giving away big things that happen. There is no way for me not to give them away because we have to talk about what happens in 9 and 10. So I'm just giving you that heads up now. 5 through 8 is a bit more of the exposition, if you will. It's sort of that little backgroundy stuff. But then 9, 10, 11, and 12 is pretty much nothing but action through the end. You know that? That's it. See you later.